How's it going, guys? So about two weeks ago, I kicked off a community project so that my Discord could build something together with me. And we decided to build out a game, which I'll demo and I'll walk you through what we have deployed out, survivethenightgame.com if you want to check it out. But right now you have a bunch of different levels, right? This is like a puzzle game. And the twist is we want AI models to try playing these maps. So every hour we basically have a cron job that kicks off a bunch of different AI models. They run through all the different levels. I think we have like 20 or so different levels, which you can actually come through here, log in and play by hand if you want to. But we wanted to see like how well can models play a simple puzzle game. And so far they're doing pretty good, right? We have GBT40 doing eight wins, 12 losses. And we have Perplexity Llama doing six wins, 14 losses. So they're doing better than I thought they would. So before I walk you through all the features we have, I do want to say that this community project was sponsored by Convex, which is the backend as a service we are using. It gives you a bunch of features where you can just write your API endpoints. It has a built-in database. It has file storage. It has a lot of vector searching if you decided you want to do AI stuff. Lots of cool features. And I use Convex on basically all my side projects because it just helps me move so much faster than just using Next.js by itself. So the first thing that I want to demo out is that we have the ability to sign in. So we have a Google sign in and a GitHub sign in. And I want to state that this is all built in the Convex. Convex released a Convex auth package, which is in beta, but it gives you the ability to do OAuth sign in out of the box. And it's really easy to get started. So let's just go ahead and sign in with GitHub and we should be able to start playing the games manually. So like if you go to play here, you can see all the games and maps that you have not beaten yet. Let's just try to play one real quick. Let's let's play this one. Let's talk about the rules of the game. So when you start off, you can place your player, which happens to be this robot character, and you can also place two blocks. So I can go ahead and block these zombies. And the zombies are going to use a breath first search algorithm to try to find a path to you, and they will just kind of destroy the boxes along the way. You can also place a landmine, which is a new feature we've been trying to add in. We have been trying to add in different mechanics to the game just to kind of spice it up a little bit. But the way the landmine works is if a zombie were to hit the landmine, it just blows up, right? Versus the boxes just kind of delay the movement. So let's just run the simulation and then you can see the zombies kind of moving through and a player is gonna shoot at the closest zombie every round, okay? So if you beat the level, you'll get you survived and then you can move on to the next night. Again, this is all a work in progress. This this whole page needs to be kind of improved. The UX isn't the best. So this is the idea of the game. You can manually play through these if you want to. We also have a playground. So if you want to go and build a map yourself and then test it, you can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a map that looks kind of like this. And then I can say play map. And then I'll place my player and some blocks. I'll run the simulation. And we will see that we will easily win this map. We can go back to the edit page and we can submit maps. So that's something that if you want to come in and try to make a map and submit it, you can do that. And doing so, we have an admin review feature. So I am set up as an admin account. I can come in here and see all the maps that people have submitted, and then I can review them or reject them, or I can play them myself to see if I can even beat them. So that's kind of how the game works, but let me show you the cool feature of how does AI play this game. Now, like I mentioned, the idea is that every hour we kick off a bunch of games and these AI models play through them. Turns out that Convex has a built-in cron job function where you can just define a cron job and have it run at whatever interval you want. And you can just call some type of function and it's going to run whatever code you want. So in our project, if you go and look at the crons file, you'll see that we call run active model games every interval. And what this does is it queries all of the models that we currently have in the system. And it basically kicks off a chain reaction of gameplay. So it's going to run map one. And if it wins or loses map one, it goes on to the next map until it hits the very final map in the system. So I can actually kick that off real quick. This is the convex dashboard that gives you access to all of your convex data, all of your functions, your mutations, your queries, you can call your files, your crons. What we want to do is find that function. So I call it run active game models. And then we are on production right now. You can actually switch back to development if you want. So let's manually kick off this function. I'm going to go ahead and run it and then I will unlock it so I can run it in production and I'm going to kick that off. Now when I kick that off, you'll see that in this dashboard, we have a bunch of different games that these models start playing through. So you'll see over here, we have Gemini playing a game. We have GPT-40 playing a game. We have uh, Claude playing a game. So for example, if you want to see how Claude's doing, we can go ahead and click on this game and that'll give us a list of all the maps that it's playing through. And to kind of show what's going on, if you go to the Convex Schedules tab over here in the Convex Dashboard, you'll see that it's scheduled off a bunch of different maps to play through. Now there is some delay between when it plays through these maps. You'll notice that this is just kind of stuck here because a lot of these models have rate limits and you can't just hit their API over and over again. 
So I added about a minute delay between every game to avoid that and also just to slow down costs because using these models costs money and you don't want to just run through a bunch of games. So you can see here it kicked off the second level and it actually won. So Claude is winning through level one and level two. If we go back to the watch tab, we can see that some of these models are doing pretty good. Other models seem to be failing for some reason. And that is coming from Gemini. So we are doing a lot of trial and error with trying to figure out like, can these models play these games? And this is some of the stuff that we run into. Like you hit an API and it just fails. And so what do you do? Do you retry in a minute? Do you just let it consider this model as a failure? It lost playing that level. But overall, it'll play through every single level and then it stores a result and a reason as to why it did what it did. For example, let's check out night three and figure out why it decided to put the player right here. So it says, I picked these locations because placing the blocks at one zero and two zero creates a barrier between the zombies and the player. This will force the zombies to take a longer path to reach the player, giving the player more time to throw popsicles. Now I added throw popsicles instead of shoot at because Gemini, the AI model that we're using, seems to throw a lot of safety uh, errors. If you were to say like shoots or gun or whatever, it's, it's ridiculous, but I just kind of replace some of the keywords so that the models can actually like play the game. I found that pretty funny, but placing the player at two one ensures that the player is not directly next to the zombies and is protected by the block. So this level is actually kind of hard to play as a human. I'm surprised that some of these AI models were able to beat it. Granted, some of the stuff might be just random chance that it happens to beat the maps. For example, this one, it just lost. For some reason to put the player right next to a zombie and put the blocks above so the ai is kind of dumb but it's fun because you get to watch through and see why it did certain things like both gemini and mistrial put the blocks at the top in the player right next to a zombie who knows why but you know you can read through the logic and reasoning and try to figure out why it did what it did so let me talk about the code a little bit this can be found at webdevcody slash survive the night sim the link will be in the description but you can go through here and clone this and run through the readme if you want to get this running locally or try to contribute I will say, join my Discord if you want to contribute to this project. I don't want to see a PR from people that haven't been in the Discord because like they start working on stuff that we haven't even decided. So that's my one thing I recommend. But how some of the code works is that we have a convex folder and that is where all the backend logic is happening. So the first thing I want to share is we have a schema file where we define all the different tables in convex and then the properties that live on the table. So for example, we have a maps table and it has like a level, it has a grid and it has who submitted it and if it's reviewed or not. So this maps table basically stores the information of all these different levels. And one thing I want to point out with Convex is you have the ability to run like an initialized seed process. So when this thing first runs, we have this init.js file and we basically just run a seed maps function, a seed models and a seed prompt. So seed maps is going to run through some hard coded levels that we have. So we have a bunch of levels hard coded here. And it basically just inserts those into our database when we first run convex locally. Okay, to run this locally, you just do npm run dev, and that's going to spin up the Next.js front end and also the convex back end. And to get this working with the models, you do have to go create accounts and set up API keys for all these different models. So that's in the readme as well. It's a little bit involved. But once you have that set up, the way this works is again, we have this function that we can call. So if you go back to functions here, we have a run active model games. So let's try to find that function. Let's just search for it and then we'll go over here. The way this is working is we basically get the active models and then we run a mutation for every single one. So for example, from the Claude model, we basically start a new game. And what this is doing is it grabs the game and it grabs the current map from the levels list. And then it tells the model to play against that map. Okay, so let's just look at the play map action over here. And the way this works is we create an initial result and then we get the map. And then what we do is down here, we actually start asking the model to play the game. So there's a function called run model where we pass it the model ID. We pass it the 2D grid of cell locations and like where the zombies are set up and where the rocks are set up. And if you look at this function, this is going to basically figure out a prompt and it passes it to one of these AI models. So this is like a hard coded switch statement of all, all the models we support and based on the model, we will use a prompt or kind of change how the prompt works because some of these models have to like parse the JSON responses a little bit differently, which can be kind of uh, annoying. So for example, we look at the GPT-4.0, we basically use the OpenAI SDK, we call the model, we pass it our system prompt, we pass it a user prompt. And at some point we get back the box coordinates, the player coordinates and the reasoning. So this is like where it decided to put the player, where it decided to put the boxes and then also why it decided to put those there. And all these models look kind of similar. So if you look at like 
mistrial or perplexity. Like it's the same idea. It's just different ways how we're parsing the JSON, which is kind of tedious to get working because sometimes these models just don't give back JSON the way you think it would. So then once we get back the locations that it thinks it wants to put the players in the boxes, we make sure those are valid locations. So then once we get the result of the model running the game, we basically store that in the database. And if you go ahead and click on update result, I can kind of skim through all this. You don't need to know too much about how this works. We basically track if the, the model won, if they lost. But the important part is down here, we check if there's more levels to be played, we can schedule another action to run. It's going to basically increment the level by one and it just does that same process over and over again. So that's kind of what you're seeing here in the schedule functions in Convex dashboard. It basically keeps rescheduling new games to play with the next level. And as it gets through all the levels, we will see how the models did over time. So if you go back to the watch page, and if you go to the leaderboard, you can see how these models were doing over time. So that is a quick overview of the project. We have a decent amount of features added in right now. So if you want to kind of jump in and contribute before it gets a little bit too complex, now is probably a good time. Now I do want to talk about where are the next steps. The next things I want to try doing is instead of these models playing all these maps individually, I wanted to try to have a giant board, like one board that has all five models on the board itself. And I basically just going to have waves of zombies come in and attack the players. And it might be fun to see which model survives the longest. So like we just have like all five models on the board and every turn we basically ask GPT or ask AI like, hey, what should the player do? And we might add the ability for the player to move around and see how that does. But this was the original idea. I think it's pretty cool but I think we could actually make it a lot more interesting. Another thing I want to do is add more mechanics. So we just added the ability to place landmines, but I think depending on the level and the complexity of the level, I think having more mechanics to kind of change up the, the gameplay would be really cool. So that's kind of where we're at now with the community project. Again, if you want to join in, join my Discord. And that's about it. Be sure to go check out Convex, which is what we're using for all the back end on this project. It's a really great service. I use it a lot. I highly recommend. And other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.